Hey everybody, I'm Sean Mayer and welcome to the next episode of Overland Q&A. Uh, lovely little morning, it's 9 o'clock in the morning and it's only 38 degrees Celsius with a beautiful breeze blowing. So, welcoming change to the last week of the heat that we've been going through. Um, let's jump into the questions. Remember, send your questions to my email address. Uh, it's easier for me to get hold of those questions than it is on the comments uh, through YouTube. Um, we do try and get to every single comment, but obviously the amount of footage that we got over there to check all the, the, the comments is challenging at, at, at times. And if we're out filming, we're obviously not going to catch those. Whereas on my email, uh, I can get to those and respond to them through this forum. So let's get off, let's kick it off. Uh, JNO5, what music do you use? Now this is obviously not an Overland question. However, we do get other uh, aspiring uh, creators and other creators watching our show. So um, uh, we use a site called Epidemic Sound. It has a wide variety of all kinds of music. So uh, check them out. If not, there are a bunch of free sites out there as well. I know YouTube has a, free, a bunch of free sites or free music in their, in their creator studio. But uh, the paid sites are normally a lot better, especially if your channel is going to start growing and you're going to start getting 5,000, 10,000, 100,000 million views. Um, getting the paid up license is far better than trying to use any free music, if you're going to monetize, that is. Hope that answers your question. Uh, Haza Bunny Malek. Uh, I hope that I got that right, Haza. Um, where do you go overlanding, or where do you go for overlanding routes and GPS points? Now, uh, I think there's two ways to answer this question. Firstly, in the Middle East, as far as I'm aware, and I haven't come across anything yet, we do not have something similar to Africa where they've got tracks for Africa. In Australia, they use HEMA maps where you download the additional information to your Garmin or to your smartphone, and it'll give you tracks that are already available um, that are set up by either the company Tracks for Africa or HEMA Maps, and you can go and explore the off-road routes. Now, um, there was an off-road package that was available here in the UAE not too long ago through Garmin. I bought it, and I can tell you it's pretty much useless. Um, there aren't many tracks. So, for us, we utilize MotionX Pro. We also utilize Google Earth. When I go and plan a trip, I go onto Google Earth, and I go and explore um, hidden beaches, I explore hidden routes through the mountains, a lot of them end up being goat tracks versus uh, any beaten track, but uh, a lot of fun. Um, remember to take two cars if you're going to go and explore that because you're going to be moving a lot of boulders uh, up in the mountains, especially the Hajar mountain range. Getting into some of those tracks, you've got to do a lot of boulder work to get across some of the washouts, uh, especially after the rainy season. So we would, we would track something like that, convert that file into our GPS, uh, into GPX or whatever file you'd be utilizing depending on your, on your GPS. And then we'd use that to track as well as MotionX Pro on the iPad and also the smartphone in the car. The other part of the question, because I think this, this question has two parts to it, saying uh, where do you go for your overlanding routes and GPS points? Now I've said a number of times on this channel that we upload our GPS tracks to our website. So if you go to expeditionextreme.com, you will find a routes um, menu, and there you will be able to download the routes from each of our trip. However, our website is undergoing quite a big change at the moment. Um, we're gonna be launching an online store. I will discuss that at a later stage. We've got some great products coming in from Australia and South Africa. Um, products that we've tested and proven in the show um, products that we're going to be selling direct and also products we're going to be sticking on the products. For example, the Fenta trailer that's behind me over here. Um, that will be available on our site as well, as well as the Orbit trailers, as well as Bunda Top Tents. All products that we utilize, that we actually believe in, will be available online through our, our site as well. So we would resell for um, our sponsors, uh, people that assist us during the show, as well as uh, products that aren't available in the market that we're going to be launching pretty soon. So watch the space for that. But right now, if you go there, some of our earlier routes, the routes are available. You can download them. But I would say by 
probably run about, we're aiming for the 1st of July to launch this. Um, so 1st of July, 1st week of July, run about there. You will be able to go on the site and get all the routes um, as well as be able to do some online shopping for the Expedition Extreme gear um, as well as, as everything else that we recommend um, during our shows. Next question. Uh, Duncan from Adelaide, South Australia. Oh mate, do I wish I was there with you right now. 38 in the morning and going up to 50 degrees. We had last week uh, in Oman with 60 degrees Celsius, so I wish I was down there with a jumper on and getting the cooler weather. Uh, right, Duncan, your question. How do you make use of the space inside the roof? Uh, inside the, oh, how do you make space high up inside the roof space of most 4x4s? It all seems wasted. Now you're absolutely correct, Duncan. Inside most 4x4s, especially the 70 series, has got quite a high roof and that space is hardly ever utilized. Now what we do is we use like a bungee net um, and I store my solar panels in there, I store my jumpers, my jackets, um, the soft shoes that are utilized to walk on the rocks if we're not in close to the beach areas, anything that's lightweight, that is bulky, that has no other space in the car, we shove into the top over there. Um, we have a tie down that goes so it doesn't fall out of those, of those uh, netted uh, bungee cord kind of a thing. Um, it's like a cargo net and we see it works pretty well. I've got two of them in the vehicle. I've got one at the rear that only works for the solar panels and like I said, jacket or two. And if my son's not traveling with us and we take out the rear seats, then I'll have one behind our heads and the, and the rear seat compartment. And that will have, especially bread, when, you, when you're going along and you're doing some of these trips and you've got to buy one or two, three nights worth of rolls or bread or whatever the case may be, and it goes in with the rest of your groceries, they get squished so quickly. So up in that space, um, those lightweight, soft goodies, whether it be food or, or clothing, great spot for them to go in. Just make sure when you tighten them, um, you can normally get them tightened from the handrails, uh, that, that you stretch it because as you're going along and it's bouncing, 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 you've got, if you've got a bit of weight in there like a solar panel or, or a bunch of jackets and shoes, it eventually does stretch and then it'll start knocking the top of your fridge or whatever the case may be. So as you're going, just adjust, adjust it and tighten it up. Uh, hope I got that question right for you there. Uh, hope it helps out. Send me a picture of your rig and let's have a look. Um, there are a number of solutions out there. I know guys have gone and built in hard, um, you know, basically put in an aluminium plate and, and shoving the stuff in there with, with little uh, tie downs that tighten it so that the stuff doesn't move around. Um, I think aluminium is, is lightweight, but uh, the cargo net is much lighter than that, obviously. We want to try and keep the center of gravity as low as we possibly can on these overland vehicles. It's not always easy because rooftop tent and you add your, um, uh, your awning to that and then you add a quick, uh, quick on sweet shower, shower solution and all of a sudden you, you're jumping up to 80, 90 kilos on your roof, which is not advisable but obviously then you're driving to the ability of your vehicle at that time. Ah, Duncan, while I was packing away my chair into the storage room, I came across the extra one that I use uh, behind my seats when my son's not traveling with us. So they got a ton of these hooks on them. So this can pretty much go in, hook onto the handles, hook onto little cargo hooks, depending on which vehicle you have. We'll have a number of these all over the place. Pull them nice and straight, yeah, nice and stretchy so you can pull them nice and tight. Um, or you can wrap them around and hook it on, its, on itself and pull it nice and tight. So this is what I'm talking about. Go and try one of them out. They're great. Hopefully we, we uh, entertained you with this week's Q&A. Stay in touch. Keep on sending the messages in and we'll see you next Tuesday. Have a great week. Chat to you soon.